Will has a question. He says, so this is great timing. I am currently getting ready to build a house. Mm. Is it all right to go with a higher monthly payment, higher than you recommend, in hopes of refinancing? Because we know interest rates are kind of hiked up right now. So what do you guys think? Yeah, um, a, a lot of, you know, I had this conversation with a dear friend this morning. And right, and this person, they've been trying to like get into a house, but the house, the real estate market keeps kind of running from them and interest rates have now like worked against them. And I was like, well, look, if you're just trying to get on the right side of home ownership, a strategy is if you believe that in the future interest rates will come down, if you think the interest rates might normalize somewhere between four to five, five and a half percent, and that's what the normal is, but you just, for various reasons, need to be on the home ownership side of the equation, a strategy is, okay, I can go ahead and, and buy the house and my monthly service might be higher than 25%. But I know that if at some point in the future I'm able to refinance from 7% or 6.5% down to a 45 or 5.5%, then that brings the affordability factor down. That's a strategy that you could pursue. Now, it makes me real nervous, Brian, because that's kind of like a little bit of Russian roulette, a little bit of gambling, a little bit of thinking. Because, you know, the question I would have is, I mean, what if, what if rates don't come down? And what do the other areas of your life look like? What's the other debt service look like? Do you have student loans? Do you have credit cards? Do you have auto loans? It just makes me real nervous. And okay, I'm going to bend the rule right now. And once something changes, then I'll be where I'm supposed to be. I, there'd be I'd have to have like a lot of safety nets on that. Like, okay, my income's going to go up and I don't have any other debt service. And I feel highly confident that interest rates are going to fall to where I can refi. And I'll be able to refi when that happens. Like, I just feel like I'd have to check all those boxes before I could tell Kyle, yeah, go that strategy. Well, I mean, we share... 25% of your gross income towards housing. And, and I, I, I get it. That seems a little tone deaf. But the reason we have that rule that, that sounds pretty rigid in these current times is because we want to make sure that you're not, you know, house rich, life poor. Right. We actually want to make sure that you can still fund your your savings and investment goals, but also still have enough, you know, jingle in your pockets to, to go out there and go on vacation and do other fun stuff. So here, here's what I would do if you're trying to get a little more analytical, but also understand that that it's it's weird to give, you know, binary answers on something that has a lot of different moving parts. The first thing is that career and income. If you, um, because I've I've had these conversations and other components, like I had a an attorney friend who went right after she graduated from law school, she was not funding her Roth IRA. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you realize you should be funding your Roth that window's gonna close because on you're you. going to be making more money than it allows you to fund that. And, you know, this is before we had all the backdoor conversions and so forth. But I was trying to tell her this is a window of time that you had to, 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 to seize this opportunity. I was like, you need to kind of plan ahead. So I think if you're in a, if you're the type of person like like my example, this attorney where your income, you will come out at this associate level, but within three to five years, your income likely will have doubled. Mm -hmm. um, the, you ought to at least put put a bookmark in to this gives me some flexibility to think about where my career is going versus you know where this house and the affordability of it now versus where it'll be in three years. The other part, you know, you mentioned interest rates, and this is something you could do as a fun exercise. Is that we know part the huge part of affordability right now is the interest rates on mortgages cross seven percent, which is something we haven't seen like in I think forty. You know, it's been, it's a, been long a long time. time. Um, so there's direct, definitely a correlation to how high the interest rates are to the affordability. Go run the calculation of what your payment would be if mortgage rates went down to five percent mm -hmm. instead of running a seven percent mortgage, run maybe a four and a half or five percent mortgage rate. See if that gets you closer to that 25% threshold. And if it does, that might give you some peace to be like, okay, well, there might be an opportunity to get closer to the goal here um, when interest rates come down. Because I do think they will come down. I don't know if that's 12 months in the future. I don't know if that's 18 months in the future. My, my reasoning on why I think they will come down is I don't think our government can afford to keep rates you know, this so high. high. I mean, as you, the carry cost of the national debt is it approaches a trillion dollars a year. You quickly realize, man, this is something that, um, yeah, they, they're probably not going to want to sustain that for too long. But they they're fighting inflation, so this is why it is. And then the third thing, 
And Bo mentioned this other debt. Mm -hmm. I mean, because it's it's easy for somebody who came out of college with zero debt, zero credit card debt to say, hey, since I have no other debt pulling on me besides this housing decision, I think I can probably go a little bit beyond the 25. But if you're somebody who's got, you know, 20% of your income is going to your student loan debt, you have car payments, you have some credit card and consumer debt that you... You, you you do not need to be taking some mm-hmm. some jumps in flexibility on that twenty five percent because you might be getting squeezed out on your total debt percentage. So so pay attention to the other debt because that will impede your ability to save and invest for the future. And that's the key part. I want to make sure that you don't make a decision today, that incremental decision, because you think that house is the most important thing, impeding your ability to actually have the great big beautiful tomorrow because that, that's that's how finances work you you stack up little tiny incremental decisions but they have huge impacts i mean these things balloon out and when you get 10 15 20 years in the future so you want to be very mindful that's why we talk about 88 times over and all the other things go check out our money multiplier uh, moneyguy.com slash resources so you can make sure you have a good understanding not only of what this house will do for you, but what you should be focusing on with your, your your financial resources. And Kyle, I'd encourage you, go download our eight questions to answer before you buy real estate. So that way you can make sure you're answering all the questions correctly, moneyguy.com slash resources to get that deliverable as well.